Hi, Brenda Lynn Martin with Positive Spin TV, and I'm here to introduce a new segment of Inspirational Life Stories. On today's show, we present the story of Michelle Holliday, a young woman who has had to overcome seemingly unsurmountable obstacles in her life. To most people, the desert is an oasis, a place to relax and regenerate from the stressful life in the cities. It's a place to retire and enjoy life in a peaceful and healthy environment. But for some people, the desert is anything but an oasis. The heat and the discomfort it brings can be brutal to the unfortunate people who have to live on the street. What dire circumstances drove a successful wrestler, sports cover girl, and model to leave the limelight for the hardships of living in the desert? Positive Spin is giving focus to Michelle's story and its ongoing commitment to presenting inspirational life stories. Hi, Michelle. I can't wait to tell the world about your story. Tell us how you came to the desert. I came here um, for medical care. For which? I had brain lesion, and I'm trying to get medical care for it because I have migraines. I also am supposed to be on meds, and I don't take the meds because they do hurt your body. So I chose not to take my meds. And tell them a little bit about the brain lesions. The brain lesions, I've had them since I was young. I had a neurologist in Indianapolis tell my mother and me that um, there's nothing that they could do for them. There's no operation or anything. So you just live with the migraines and the yes. headaches. Yes. But being on the medicine that you were on for 15 years, it caused damage to your liver. And you I'm bipolar, schizophrenic. Schizophrenia, I have ADD, ADHD, and all the medications that I was on, they controlled them, but not enough. So I decided to stop taking my meds, and I smoke marijuana, and it actually controls it. And it helps what made me. you leave the and wrestling arena? I got injured. What happened exactly? Um, a very risky move. I injured my back. And I had to retire. And that's how you became disabled? Yes. At what age was that? That was when I was in my teens. Wow. So you've been disabled for a while? Yes. Is that permanent? Yes. Wow. So tell us what lessons you've learned being out there. That it's not easy being out there. I think people think, you know, just because you're homeless that you don't have self-respect for yourself. You don't have respect for yourself you don't you know you put yourself there you know you didn't put yourself there this could happen to anybody this could happen to anybody to anybody and that's what people don't understand it can happen it happened to me and that was the hardest thing in my life it is to become homeless because when you're being judged every day People don't realize how hard it is to sit there and say, excuse me, I, 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 do you have a dollar? Do you have spare change? That's hard for somebody to ask. Just to survive, to get something to Just drink or eat. Just to get something eat. to eat or drink. And the, re you know, the restaurants now, they're locking the bathrooms because of the drug addicts going in there and doing what they're doing in the bathrooms. So they're locking the bathrooms now in the restaurants. So you have to go up there and purchase something to go to the restroom in a restaurant to where you've got good people that are in my situation like, like, like me. I've met many people that are good people that are homeless like me that get discriminated just like I did because the restaurant owners think that I'm going to go in there and do something that I'm not doing. And that's why I've been judged that a lot, because I don't do drugs. I, I choose to walk away from that. I choose to not put myself in that situation, because I was around it every day. And when you're around it every day, you tend, you want to walk away from it. Living on the streets is, is very scary, very hard, but when you found me, I mean, I was glad because 
I was at my wit's end. I was ready. I couldn't win no more. I was tired. I was ready to live peaceful again, to be away from all the men and, and the prejudice. And I got fired from a very good job because I'm gay. That's one of the main reasons I was fired. And it, I'm not mad now. I was when I did get fired, but I'm not now. I'm not mad. I mean, I get judged every day, and people judged me because they thought that I was a heroin addict, and I'm not. You've never done drugs? No, never. Just the marijuana for the brain lesions? Yes. How long were you in the street? Two months. And where did you stay? Um, in tents, in fields, um, behind houses, abandoned houses, things like that. Did anyone ever approach you and try to hurt you? Yes, several times. Yes. Because of the drugs that were involved. Yes. What was the main drug involved on the streets? There's two of them. There's uh, heroin and meth. One's called white and one's called black. And how do they do that? They shoot themselves up with syringes. And you were next to that every day? Every day, yes. Every day, yes. Mm. Every day. Must be very difficult. It was. Is our little Wendy, your new service dog, tell everybody how she became a part of your life and where you guys are at today. I got her from a homeless lady at Stater Brothers. When I got her, she was very tiny. And I've had her ever since she was five weeks old. She's my world. She's my everything. And I've had people tell me, well, why don't you give her up and get off the streets? No. This is my baby. This, she's my everything. She means everything to me. She's a great dog. She's very smart. She's me. And everybody wanted me to give her up and go to a shelter, but I fought to keep her with me. And I told Brenda, and I told everybody, I would rather be on the streets than give up my baby. I would rather be homeless than give her up because she's my support. So they both have good lives now. Michelle's life demonstrates how a person can rise above discrimination and judgment to create a better life for herself.